All right, hello. Um, here's a little walkthrough of a kind of common problem with an inclined plane. And uh, let's say it's frictionless and is at an angle theta of 20 degrees and it's one meter long. And uh, let's say that we put a block onto this inclined plane that has a mass of one kilogram. And the question could be then, uh, what is its final velocity when it gets to this end right here, one meter away? And uh, how long did it take to do that? Um, so we, we see the problem and uh, we make sure first that all the units are correct. We have degrees and meters and kilograms, so, so far so good. So then the next step is to define a coordinate system. Um, we could define the coordinate system, I guess, in two different ways two different reasonable ways. Uh, the first one may be um, to have y up and x to the right. That would be one way to do it. Uh, in that situation though, um, I, th I mean, I think you'll see that the acceleration is going to be this way. And certainly if the block is going from this end of the ramp to this end, then the, then the displacement would also be uh, in that direction. Um, and so both of those quantities would end up being negative, which is fine. Um, the answer uh, won't matter, but you would need to recognize that when you put the numbers into the equations that, well, you'll see that A ends up negative in this coordinate system, but you would need to use a negative displacement as well. Um, so, you know, another thing we could do uh, is to define a coordinate system with uh, y up and x this way, um, which is totally fine and uh, would save us from having to remember uh, those uh, signs. So let me uh, erase this and draw back again my block and then draw the coordinate system, which is y up and perpendicular to this plane and x down. Okay, so uh, then the next step is to uh, is to come up with the free body diagram. So first let's draw the coordinate system which is x going that way and y perpendicular to it going up. And let's draw in the forces that we know. And there are two of them in this problem. Uh, the first one is the normal force, which is always perpendicular to the plane. This x-axis that we drew was parallel to the plane. So the normal force is perpendicular to it. And the only other force in the problem is the force due to gravity, which is always straight down. Um, now, if there would have been friction, there would be uh, another force which uh, would be opposing the motion. That would be the force of, of friction. Um, but we do not have that in this problem, so we will uh, not worry about that guy. And so now let us go and collect uh, the forces that we need. We need to collect all the x forces along the x direction and all the y forces along the y direction. Uh, but we have this pesky gravity here, which is uh, along neither direction. So we need the uh, components of this uh, vector. Um, we need the component along x, and we need the component along y. And uh, the question that should occur to you now is, there, there's two angles uh, here. Um, we're given that the plane is inclined by 20 to 20 degrees, but it, is this 20 here or is this 20? Um, and let me uh, help you remember uh, which it is by going to this sheet and let's draw again our, our system. 
where we have 20 degrees and we have there's the y-axis and here's gravity um, is is this the angle here or is this the angle and the way to remember that or the way to convince yourself which one is correct is to make this angle smaller in your head let's make it smaller right we've just made this thing I don't know what it is say five degrees and now we'll draw the normal to the surface like we did before and we'll draw gravity straight down like we did before and now you can see that when we made this angle smaller it was this angle that got smaller not this one no so so this here is the angle that's going to be 20 degrees okay so now we know that we make the eraser a little bit smaller and okay so now we know that that this here is 20 degrees which of course makes this uh, 70 degrees but we're not going to use that so then the question is now what what are these components we need to know uh, the component along X which is uh, this guy and we need to know the component along Y which is that guy so I'll call that X and I'll call this Y and uh, now to figure out what those components should be let us draw our triangle but we're going to rotate it into a little bit more familiar form this right angle here is right there and this is 20 degrees 20 degrees and this is the force due to gravity right here that's this hypotenuse right there all right so our mnemonic uh, that we try to remember is this one and uh, the component uh, here along X that we need is this guy and the component along Y that we need is this guy so the that means that the um, that the uh, sine of this angle tw uh, 20 degrees is equal to the opposite because this side is the opposite of this angle uh, over the hypotenuse this is the hypotenuse which is the force due to gravity which means that the X component is the force due to gravity times sine theta and likewise cosine theta is the Y component divided by the force of gravity the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse and so that means that the Y component is FG cosine theta right so uh, the steps here that we needed to get right was to make sure that we knew that this angle of the inclined plane was was this angle here not this guy uh, and then we got our components that we need the X component and the Y component and now we can collect all the X forces and collect all the Y forces uh, let me get rid of this stuff so I can do that and okay so for the X forces um, we have so let's do the Y forces first first we have uh, the normal force uh, which is positive because it's along the positive Y direction and we have the 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 component of gravity along the Y axis this guy right here and but that points the other way so that comes in with a minus sign and uh, that is uh, the force of gravity times the cosine of theta and that equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction now uh, in the let's do the x direction now um, in the x direction we have only uh, this component so we have the force of gravity times the sine of this angle is equal to the mass times the acceleration in X there is no compo component of the normal force that's along the X direction so we don't have anything there okay good now uh, the next step is to recognize that uh, the box will always uh, move uh, 
along the x-axis there will be never any motion in this direction which is to say along the y direction as I've defined it. So that means that the uh, acceleration along the y direction is zero. And that means that the normal force uh, then equals the force due to gravity times the cosine of theta. However, there is motion along the x-axis, so then we know that the acceleration along x, and that the acceleration along x is, is what we're going to need to get at these two uh, quantities that we were asked. That equals uh, the force due to gravity times the sine of theta divided by the mass. Okay. Um, the next thing to recognize um, is what is the force due to gravity? Uh, the, the, force, the force due to gravity is just the weight, which is equal to the mass times the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which was 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, and for one kilogram, uh, that means that the force due to gravity is 9.8 Newtons. Okay, and this thing here is just the cosine of 20 degrees, and this thing here is the sine of 20 degrees, and the mass is one kilogram. So uh, we can then solve for the acceleration along the x direction, and, and that will be positive in our coordinate system because we defined the x direction to point that way. Uh, so you can solve for ax. And it's straightforward. Um, then, then the next trick, the next step then is you can solve for the final velocity by using vf squared is v0 squared plus 2 times a times the displacement delta x. Um, v0 squared, this equals to 0. And this is the ax we just solved for. And this is 1 meter. So you can then solve for v final squared. And um, if you know v final, that's v initial plus the acceleration times the time. Uh, this guy here is still zero. And this is the guy we just uh, solved for here. Don't forget to take the square root, by the way. Um, which is to say that v final is uh, the square root of 2 times the acceleration in the x direction times delta x. And don't forget the square root, okay? But once you have this number uh, for v final, um, and you know v, v initial is 0, and you know what a is, then you can solve for t. And because you did everything in the right units, which is to say kilograms and, and meters, um, and then you're dealing with newtons, um, and then all the things will work out, and v final will be in meters per second, and t will be in seconds. So I hope this helped. Um, um, if if it helped, then and you'd like me to make more of these little tutorial videos, I'd be happy to do it. Please uh, let me know. Either I don't know, like the video or subscribe to the channel or something, so I can see, I can get some feedback. Um, and I hope this helps. So take care.